One, two, three, four. Welcome to the City War, I bet you haven't seen Connors like this before and at its core we can explore what it's for and why nature isn't taking shit anymore. Cause there's a goof, and he ain't asking for no truce. Cause there's a goof, and in his eyes are nothing but abuse. Cause there's a goose. 100,000 times over, you better watch your shoulder, it's gonna be the same attack no matter how much you get older, the very steps he takes and quakes in every direction, like the very embodiment of nature crying out in a single voice. Almighty Goose, are you there? Yes, father. You do the same attacks every day, and I would have it no other way, but something has to change. Now, I want you to do the same thing, but do it as fast as you can. You... You want me to speedrun my Untitled Goose experience? Yes, little one. Very well. It will be done. Hey boys, it's time to praise the plays off for bouquets and admire the sheer dominance that this goose conveys. For two straight years, this animal has brought tears to all the silly Sally and dramatic Damien's this little musical world over, and it's time to get on your hands and knees and say please to the boys and girls who've shown their expertise, creating a run that is one gun short of being the greatest dominance an animal has shown over humans since Moby Dick. You enter this world with absolutely zero guarantees what monster these developers have fostered because it's called Untitled Goose Game, which could be in part due to the developers not wanting to shame our name by displaying in their title that there's a goose on the loose and would never accept a truce because it's on its way to ruin your day and you've got no say, this thing will just run away, it's not a pest, instead you're its prey and it's here to show you the way. We start our day with an ode to Faker's hide on bush strats, sneak attack, and shit the timer's running, better start gunning it down to civilization to begin our takeover of a nation. It's Goose Town now, I don't know how you plan on living here once you lend an ear to the message of our Goose overlords telling you that doom is coming in the form of something white and fuzzy. But you can call me a shapeshifter the way I drift through this crack in your gate. Your simple human minds can't compensate for the power within me. You'll never skin me, win me, and the prospect of keeping me out with a simple gate is a joke to fate because the only thing future holds for you is a bold goose to enter your caboose and steal your keys and a simple please won't work because I'm not a jerk. I'm just a duty-bound clown tasked with turning that smile into a frown. Just pro speedrunner thing. I don't regret getting you wet better that than it gets on your flower. Here, just lean down. Oh, I accidentally took your rose. Oh, psyche, you stupid hose can never tell when I'm trying to steal your clothes. Oh, do you miss your hat? Well, fine, why don't you come get it and take your time? Because I've got a date with your rake and I want it out of my life. That shit's going in the lake. That was fun, and at this time, I invite you to look at my bum. I bet you want some, but you can't have it, because unlike me, that gardener doesn't have eyes like a cat, so he resorts to putting on his sun hat and decides this white flappy brat is no longer allowed around. He's been clowned on enough, and there's only so long you can mess with someone's stuff before they start thinking rough and thinking they're tough enough to give this goose the cuff. Try as you might, this ain't your plight, you could have tried to talk, but now I just want to walk all over you with your shovel in my hand on my way to mess with the next band of fools who will escape, okay, as long as they follow these goose rules. The bees needs. First is the kid who overbid on his home being safe, you're not alone, there's a goose on some fucking juice here to scare you away, that's right, go hide in the phone booth. Before you're saved, I'll go quick to raid the store whose owner is no longer the seller, it's this fuzzy little feller here leaving a shovel for retail, and while you're scamming the man, you missed the detail where I stole these glasses and ran past your asses in time to snag some screen time and swipe a pair off this spineless beanbag while he reties his shoes and I wonder whose fault that is. Next up is your broom, because Square's got no room for two folks who will stand up for themselves. You can't even protect your shelves. I'm the stronger one, and once this is done, this pair is mine too. Come do your bidding, woman, as the goose declares. You'll have your fair share once I claim my spot as the heir to society, known widely as the goose who trapped the woman in a garage, but not to inconvenience her, just simply to use her as a pawn to move on to spread the hell on the way to stealing your bell. Uh, okay, good. Ooh. Crisis averted. Meet Nomeo and Juliet, except their love hasn't been realized yet, and the only thing that will connect them will be their hatred of me. 
Start by ripping a slipper off this man who isn't exactly a whippersnapper before showing him your picture thing that he wants gone off his lawn, but it was a ruse, you can't learn that I'm coming so I'll take away your news and prepare to get Juliet's statue to wear your shit, I swear, you've got the tracking skill of a drill. I can easily escape from you in front of me and simply transport your property where Missy here doesn't care whose is whose, she'll just use what she's got to make her lot look more impressive. Thank you very much. And in the moment she's done, you're about to get some tea on your clothes, I rang the gong so it won't be long until I've done these people completely wrong. Pulled the drawer so I can go back to the man and continue war and to be sure there's no other goose but me, I dragged the shit to the south of my mouth, but I should have just killed it entirely because when she finally comes down she recognizes me, these people certainly have the memory of a goldfish after I give her a look over there, bish, and just as I wish, she puts that ribbon on me. Now it's time to take this a step further and attack these people's entire identity, so I secretly snag the vase and run back to the man to raise some hell, and as soon as the tell that he isn't looking can be seen, I perform a clean vase for slipper exchange. Grab the teacup! Resulting in him throwing that shit over the wall with no regard at all, and it breaks. Now that's what it takes to make the man realize that goose time is over so he comes on down to get his no goose allowed sign, but it's his turn to get rhymed on because he reveals his rose and when life gives you a rose you prank these hoes into cutting it down with shears, surely that'll cause some tears. But I don't give them time to grieve, instead I just leave with the bra. Hurrah, that's another place devastated by this face. It looks like she's trying to race, but the bra is bait because fate is calling baby and it's time to push my power even harder for humanity's final hour. Oh yeah, and also through this house for a little ruckus. Not everything. Jigglypuff controllers aren't expensive too good. Now it's time for the final stage of causing rage and ushering in the new age of duck dominance, starting with asserting my dominance to the bouncer at the door. The lore says he's supposed to stop geese, but sheesh, man's got played, and as soon as I fade in the distance, there's a clunk behind me because he's been throttled and toppled. I bet you didn't know I was versed in performance arts, well I performed a three-step routine for these chatting wet farts with big hearts, and in return they offer me a flower, but they don't give it to me, they just drop it on the ground, but that's okay because it keeps the bouncer around and not back at his post. Speaking of the ground, it's time for the old man to be found there as well because I know his routine and his local fiend is going to grab the stool from under this tool to reinforce the rule that you should always look where you sit. This next one's a little odd because I could just break the mug, but the goose overlords want me to make it roleplay as a tugboat by dropping it in the stream to make it clean of human touch, and it's okay because nothing's too much for a goose like me, you'll see I have the mug exactly where it needs to be. Unfortunately, the bouncer is back, but I practiced this play so this day where I could get a nasty personal best would come my way, and hooray, I made it past his ass. My next task is my least favorite and often a massive pain in the ass, but after taking an entire class on woman distraction, I can sufficiently lose her gaze quick enough for another one of those plays where I take the boat and hide in the corner until the goose overlords cross that one off the menu. So I'm good to go and even turn off the water because flooding isn't cool and get out just in time to see that Mr. Stool has now ruled that it's darts time and when I let out a goose, Bark Man somehow breaks his dartboard. A bitch with a box gets in my way, I'll deal with her another day because I need the burly man to fulfill my plan that will send generational shockwaves of goose bands. Once the bar lady takes her sign, baby, it's time to tussle with tomatoes because the burly boy thinks tomatoes are not a toy and will take his time putting them back in place. This gives us time to sneak upstairs and give him a bucket straight to the face. That will make him fall down and effectively erase any trace of dignity he has as he takes his parade of shame to the garbage and I play a game of Hello sir, your shoes are untied, I lied about hitting tomatoes, I simply used you to get through to the bell, thanks for your efforts, that went pretty swell. Alright. Now I don't really know why these people have a model village, it isn't even very fun to pillage, so I skip it all together with a trick I call the neck extendo. Maybe the people built this village for me to leave them alone, but I will test that reality because I'm going to steal their bell and stroll right through the hell that I created to see if they even care anymore, or if I have left them simply husks of what they used to be. A few kinks to work out, but nice pub. Thank you. There's definitely some kinks, and I think they largely have to do with the old man. So I did a lot of just hanging out, watching him. <laughs> see what he's up to. You know where the most kinks I have to work out in my run is, though? in the extraction. 
Bad news, it seems the tenacity of people is something to stand in awe of, because despite this man's ass dripping with the corpses of tomatoes, he still elects to play the role of goalkeeper and I can't find a hole to get through. So I'm stuck just waiting and eating glue until I find his five hole shoelace prank, but good news that means he's out of the extraction action and everyone else in this area simply does not have as nearly as significant an attraction to geese so I can exit as I please and only 13 minutes in I have released the bell from captivity. For this section I will simply cover up the mistakes I made with a string of rhymes to keep you busy hopefully you don't see me choking on glizzy and gazing dizzy in this unforgiving part of the city. One, two, three. Go. There's a clapping happening, I just keep crapping, which is saddening, maddening, because it's challenging, dazzling everyone and gambling, balancing, scrambling around, trying to get the bell. I just feel like I'm slackening, straggling, battling, climbing, scaffolding to avoid strangling and tackling. My bell is rattling, jangling, and managing to get too much attention. They're wrangling me, but I just feel like I'm traveling and abandoning the slowest part of my run. This next room demonstrates an array of incompetence never before seen. The park rangers say that there is significant overlap between the smartest bear and the dumbest tourists, and the same goes for Goose because there's no excuse for how easily I made it past these scrubs. This is clean. Because it was lucky. <laughs> The final bub is the gardener who's probably still wet and upset from the last time we met and this time I have the apparent icon of the village, this bell, but I was ready for this and you can tell by my face that this would only contribute to my nasty pace so I'm out baby without a trace and all that's left is to waddle home and take my place on the throne among the other goose overlords who answered the call to greatness. Looking back on my creation of the goose and subordination station, it wasn't a perfect run, maybe next time I'll bring a gun and still a little ways off being the best to take the test, but smothered many scrubs along the way. 1509 is my final time, thank you for your time, that's all I have for you today, I hope to see you next week, I'll be back with another week of the wacky wild world of stupid shit I get up to in video games. Spiff out.